Indianapolis Journey, uh, all the way from Lexington Park uh, up here to the to the closer to the Beltway. Yes. So, man, it's, it's, it, you know, it's exciting to be closer to the Beltway. You can, you can access, I mean, you're down Lexington Park, it'll take you a minute. <laughs> Yeah. You got a lot of things on your mind. You can really get them out of your mind. Right? Yeah. You get up here to 210. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God for Sister Sims, my, my bride. Amen. 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 Uh, well, she, if, if I don't have one amen, she, I got one amen. <laughs> Well, I won't keep you long. Uh, I know the time is well spent, and there is a word from the Lord. And it's going to come uh, today from John chapter number 2. John chapter number 2, very familiar passage of Scripture, uh, verses 1 through 10. John chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Uh, I'm going to be reading it from the New English Translation, which is a little different from the uh, NIV. But it means the same thing. I just want to let you know it means the same thing. I just want to use it for the clarity of scripture this morning. Amen. you dare say amen. 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 All right, so the word of God reads like this. It says, now on the third day, there was a wedding at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran out, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine left. Jesus replied, woman, why are you saying this to me? My time has not yet come. His mother told the servants, whatever he tells you, do it. Now, there were six stone water jars there for Jewish washing, a ceremony washing, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told the servants, fill the water jars with water, so they filled them up to the very top. Then he told them, now draw some water out and take it to the head steward. And they did it. When the head steward tasted the water that had been turned to wine, not knowing where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, he called the bridegroom and said, everyone serves the good wine first, and then the cheaper wine when the guests are drunk. You have kept the good wine until now. May God have a blessing to the rearing it and the hearing of his word. I just want to use for a quick subject today. Uh, what do you do when your wedding has ran out of wine? What do you do when your wedding has ran out of wine? Uh, I've had the opportunity to uh, marry two couples uh, since I've been ordained. And uh, the first couple uh, this year have been married for seven years. Amen. Seven years, Jim. Seven years. Amen. 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 Uh, but the second couple, uh, the second couple, did not make it a year before they were divorced. Mm -hmm. And I told them during the marriage counseling, I said, listen, wedding ceremonies are not magic. Just because I pronounce you man and wife doesn't mean that you walk away knowing how to be a husband and you walk away acting like a wife. Mm -hmm. It takes work. It takes work. And marriage is work. And uh, and, 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 it's, <laughs> and, it, and it's, the weddings are very costly today because people put expectations on weddings today, yeah. all right, and 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 I come to realize, uh, I, I um, being in the military, I got an acronym for the for we have an acronym for everything. So I got an acronym why people come to weddings. Ask me why people come to weddings. Why do people come? Glad you asked me. Glad you asked me. To me, they come to weddings for three reasons, and I, I, the acronym is TED. T E D. Uh, the T stands for two. They come to watch. Yeah. They want to see. What does the bride look like? What's she gonna look like in her dress? Does she have a baby bump? Was she pregnant? They want they want to see uh, what the yeah what the bride uh, bridesmaid look like. Were they fat, skinny, dark skin, light skin? Uh, and, and they want to see what the groom uh, looks like because uh, they heard he was ugly. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and they want to verify. They want to be eyewitnesses to see was was that eyewitness correct? That was he ugly? Because then she's getting married to him for the money. And the E stands for uh, they, they're coming to eat. Yeah. Now they're going to yeah. buy. They're going to buy you. They're going to buy you a, 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 a little. Uh, 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 a gift. They're gonna give you something that you don't want. Maybe a uh, 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 George Foreman or a uh, you know a blender or, or a toaster. Something that you're gonna re-gift to somebody. For uh, yeah, and, 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 but they want to 
to see what, what kind of food you're going to have at, you know, at the wedding. Okay, and then lastly, they're going to come to drink. They're going to come to drink. They, they wanted to see what my wife called liquor. <laughs> what kind of liquor? Yes. Yes. You know, uh, 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 what kind of alcoholic beverages you're going to have? How much money you're going to put on the bar? Uh, but in our text, in our text, this is a Jewish wedding. Jewish weddings last uh, about three days uh, back in that time. Uh, uh, Sister Sims and I uh, wedding didn't last but 45 minutes back in 1983. 45 <laughs> minutes, boom, we were out. And people came to watch. They wanted to see, uh, they've seen Sister Sims once or twice, and we didn't go to the same church. You know, so they seen her, they want to see, okay, what kind of dress she got? Does she got a baby bump? What's going on? Uh, what her family look like? You know, they, they seen my family, you know, what, what, what's going on with that? They came to eat. They came to eat, and, and, and uh, we, we had people bringing food, and my daddy played, paid for the meats and stuff, and, and then uh, they came to drink. Uh, they came to drink, and, and my, my cousin, he was drunk already before he came, <laughs> he came to drink. Uh, so uh, our reception, however, our reception, uh, well, I'm out there already. Uh, it didn't, to, for us, it only lasted 30 minutes, 30 minutes. And Rosalind, she really wanted to stay at the reception a little longer, but I was ready to get to the hotel because, <laughs> I, 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 like I said, I'm already out there. I was so happy that, that now we didn't have to repent for fornicating. I, you know, I, was, I, I know that's not y'all's story. I mean, I know y'all saved y'all for that right person, and you want to be with the Lord, and then you want to be with the Lord, see? But that was not our, our testimony. And that's what the Bible says. Uh, there was a wedding in Canaan. Somebody said wedding in Canaan. Oh, wedding. And Jesus was there, and, and uh, his mother was there, and the Bible says that they were invited to the wedding. Yeah. And, and some people, uh, uh, some people, uh, J, J, they, 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 they invite themselves to the wedding. <laughs> they invite yes, themselves. They, and and that, that's to say that they, 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 they heard that, that, that you were getting married, you know, and, and they didn't get an invite, you know, they heard it. They heard it. What do you mean? And they didn't invite me? They get a little dignity. They go, I got the nerve in him. They're not inviting me. And this, oh, girl, don't come on, girl. They ain't gonna buy. They ain't gonna buy. Come on, come on. They ain't gonna buy. They ain't gonna buy. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. I, I tried to invite myself to a wedding on last week. Uh, my friend of mine that, that uh, I was serving Marine Corps with, uh, I saw him on LinkedIn, and then we just was conversating back and forth. And I, I said, hey, man, uh, have you heard from uh, Shorty Lee and, and Big Rob? He said, yeah, I talk to him every once a month uh, because they're going to be groomsmen in my wedding. I said, oh, wedding, because I knew he'd been married once already. So I, I, was, I was like, I said, well, man, you in New York, you can't afford to get an invite. Ain't heard from him since. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't heard from him since, so I was trying to invite myself to the wedding. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> so John, John is the only uh, synopsis that captures the wedding at Canaan. And, and first he tells in chapter 1, you, you all can read it in your time, but Brother Ellis, if you've been in Sunday school, you know that, that he, he talks about in the beginning, the, uh, what's the word, 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 word God. And he just, he clarifies that he is God, he's God, and, and that he's the only begotten son full of grace and truth in chapter 1. And then in chapter 2, Jesus is at a wedding that has run out of wine. And I don't want to touch that right now because, you know, uh, uh, first day one, we got some, we got, we got some, some church folk that are more religious than, than Jesus. You know, we got some church folk that are more, 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 more religious. They're more, more religious. Preach, preach. Yeah, yeah. Y'all yeah. 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 people like that? Yeah. 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 And so, so he doesn't play by the rules, you know. He he can go anywhere he wants to go. Amen. 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 So, so, so here we are. We get the ear hustle of conversation that Jesus is having with his mother, and she comes to him and say, "Hey, son. Hey, son. You know they they run out of wine. They run out of wine. You know now now to me to me running out of, of wine is not a problem for the only begotten Son, full of mercy and grace, to solve. Just to me, to me, but not 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 when. You got you got people who uh, who have been over for eighteen years. Not when you got people yeah. who have an issue of blood for twelve mm -hmm. years. Not when you got a man with a withered hand. Not yeah. when you got blind people. Not when you got yeah. people yeah. sick of palsy yeah. on the porch. Yeah. Not when you got all people like that. Because but because he cares yeah. about it, he involves himself <laughs> in something that really isn't a problem at all. It was a party. I already told you in this Jewish party. It was a three day party. Mm -hmm. If you run out of wine, so what? But it hadn't been us at the, at the, at the party. You know, we, 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 okay, let me tell Wally Sim. I was in, they said, you know, we know we running out of, out of wine, Wally. Uh, I was saying, you know, uh, tell the DJ, last call for alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> last, call, last call for alcohol. Uh, hey, 
Oh, we we out of line. We out. We out. We go home. Go home. And, and, and we get to listen to Jesus' frustration with his mother by saying, "Woman, what am I gonna do with you?" You know, I, 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 my mom, my mom, my mom, my what, mom, what, oh boy, just make gifts to what he would tell me, get the wine going, you know, but, but he doesn't involve, he, he doesn't even call her mama, he says woman. Mm -hmm. Then he says, woman, my hour has not yet come, mm -hmm. but because of my relationship with you, I will do something for you that I didn't even plan to do because of the clout, because of the influence that you have on me being uh, your son, I'm going to do this for you. So it was an unexpected miracle. How many of y'all have gotten an unexpected miracle from, from the Lord? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the things that, that God does that wasn't even planned. I mean, you got a check in the mail that was unexpected. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. yeah. Hallelujah. You got a, a raise on your job that was unexpected. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your loan got approved. It was unexpected. Yeah, yeah. It was because of your relationship with God that he steps in and gives us an unexpected miracle. Well, give me some Bible, uh, preacher. Moses. Moses at the Red Sea, and, and behind him he got Pharaoh, and in front of him he got the Red Sea, and he got to do something. And God tells him, use what you have in your hand, Moses. And he says, stretch forth your hand, stretch forth your rod, uh, uh, Moses. And, and God parted the Red Sea, and he blew the wind back, blew the river back so much so that he dried the dry ground as they walked through, they didn't get any mud on their feet. Uh, so that's the kind of God that we serve. It wasn't the right time, it wasn't the right season, but he said, Moses, if you believe me, I'll give you an unexpected miracle. Yeah. So God will give you some unexpected miracles. Uh, where else, uh, preacher? Sarah. Sarah had a baby. Yeah, it wasn't the right time, it wasn't the right season, but God said he could do what he wants to do. He doesn't have to meet with the pastoral committee, he doesn't have to meet with the deacon board, he doesn't have to meet with any board. He said, I can do it, I'm God, and besides me, there is no other. What do you do when your wedding has ran out of wine? Yes, ran out of wine. And I noticed this. This is not, uh, this is, is, is Jesus' first public miracle. Let me get that straight here. First public miracle, not his first, not his first miracle, because this cannot be his first miracle. Because his uh, Mary, 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 uh, uh, how can I say that? Uh, Mary would not ask him to do something that she had never seen him do before. So she says she has seen him do this in private. That makes her believe that he can do this in public. So God will let you practice in private what He will later do in public. Okay, well, 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 give me an example, preach. Okay, uh, when I was growing up, uh, <clears throat> when I was growing up, we would on Saturday mornings we would watch cartoons, and then uh, uh, American Bandstand comes on, and then Soul Train, and so what me and my sisters would do, we would we would act out, act out who's ever in Soul Train in the dances and do the things there at the house. But uh, when uh, my uh, mother would have company come over. And the company would come into the front room because when I grew up, the living room was a sanctuary that, that little kids were not allowed not even to sit in on those plastic little cushions. That they burn. <laughs> okay, all right. But uh, uh, but my 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 mom would come in. She'd say, "Boy, come here and show Miss Perlene that dance that you that you know how to do." And, and and I had to go out there and do it because there's no way that that she would ask me to do that in front of her friends as she had never seen me do that before. So Mary had to have seen him do it before, just like my parents did. And she said, look here, baby, I know you've been doing this at the house, but it's time for you to go public with this thing right now. So he has done some things in the public. Have you done anything uh, in your in your life that, that he did at your house and now he, he went public when he was doing in your prayer life, in your private time with the Lord? Yeah, so, so uh, to me, it's ironic here that the marriage takes place at Cana. Canaan's in Galilee where he started. He also finishes in Galilee. Amen. When he tells Peter, meet me in Galilee. And he has a, a come full circle back to where he started from. Uh, those of you that are around my, my age, uh, uh, I'm going to be the speed limit of 55 here in a short, short month. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, uh, but we know what it's like to go around full circle. Life come around full circle. Uh, I'm working on a base now uh, in Quantico that I was first stationed 30, 31 years ago. And now I looked at it and said, wow, this has come 
full circle. Uh, you, you go all the way back to come back where you were, but now I'm there on another level. On another level. That's what Jesus is doing here. And in Jesus, uh, and in John chapter number one, we were already talked about it. He was creating things in chapter number one. And then chapter number two, he's now committed to a wedding. Not only do we see that here, but in Genesis chapter number one, we also see him out there creating things. In the beginning, there were, and he said, let there be light, and there was, and he separated the, the heavens from the earth, and, and he said it was good. And, and then we get to chapter two, he's at a wedding again when he tells Adam to fall into a deep sleep, and he, he, he pulls uh, uh, the woman out of, of the man. He said, uh, this is, uh, this is, he says, he presents the bride to the groom and said, uh, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. And she said, Adam said, I will call you woman. And what God has put together, let no man put us under. And this is the same God that has come to marry us, the church, as his vows virgin, and shares communion with us like we're going to do today. And he says, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. And then he said, and drink this cup. This is the New Testament in my blood. And he says, and, and in commemoration of the ceremony, he says, I will not drink any more wine with you until we drink it new in the kingdom of God at the marriage supper of the Lamb. So, so from Genesis to Revelation, we have a God that consistently is at a wedding, or either he is creating a wedding, or either he is invited to a wedding. Uh, he is in the wedding because he is the God of the, of the connection. He's the God of, of a hookup. He's the Amen. God of a joiner. He's the God that brings two things that are separated and makes them one. Uh, wh wh why does God like weddings? Because he's a God of creativity. He says, I'm going to make the man, and then I'm, a, I'm going to impregnate the man with the woman, and I'm going to impregnate the woman with the family. Why? Because I'm God, and I can do what I want to do. Yes. What do you do when your wedding has ran out of wine? Amen. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Well, still married, but out of wine. The joy is gone. My mother loved the blues, and and she, B.B. Uh, King was one of her favorite artists, and, and he had this song, and I know some of y'all might might remember this song. He had this song called "The Thrill Is Gone," and she would talk. He would see what my she, my daddy would hear that song coming off the reels. They ain't seen the thrill is gone, you know. Then she what she saying was that the excitement was gone, the wedding remained, but the wine was gone. And and the thing about it, the reason I give you that example is that if we're not careful, our wedding will run out of wine. What do you mean? Our excitement will run out of wine. Still got on the right clothes, still saying the right things, but the thrill is gone. So what do you do when the wine, the wedding has run out of wine? I mean, so what do you do, preacher, when your job uh, has run out of wine? What do you do then, preacher, when your life has ran out of wine? And sometimes we just come to a point that we're just going to work. We used to be excited about it. Brother, brother, brother Ellen, we used to be excited. We used to go skip to the loop. To the, oh, I love my job. I can't. I, I love my job. Oh, I can't wait to get to the work. But I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait because we had a strategy. We had a plan. But now we're just going to work. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm going to touch a little closer. We used to be excited about going to church. You say, oh, God, thank God I'm saved. to skip to the loop to the church. But now we just going to church because that's where we belong. And the wedding has run out of wine. What do you do when your wedding has ran out of wine? What do you do when something that used to be so happy and used to be so so uh, exciting to do has now become routine and ritual? And, and now we're stuck at a wedding that has ran out of wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many of us at this point, one of another, are dealing with something that used to be wonderful, that used to be beautiful, but now it has ran out of wine. Yeah, I mean, if I was preaching this sermon, uh, if I was listening to this sermon uh, uh, some uh, uh, 30 years ago when uh, Sister Sims and I were married four years, uh, 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 I, I would be looking straight. I would keep my eyes straight and, and preach with preaching. I, I would... I would uh, I, 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 I would wrinkle my forehead up to act like I didn't understand what the preacher was talking about uh, because I know that I was going to get questioned in the car uh, when, we, when, when we home. She's going to say, well, baby, when did we run out of wine? Was it my fault or your fault? You, you worked uh, two jobs. What, what, what did you slack me the red jest? And I mean, you know, all that stuff would come up. <laughs> Mary 
Mary comes running to Jesus and tell him that they ran out of wine. He says, my hour has not come yet. And she doesn't answer his question. She doesn't say another word. She just turns to the servant and says, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Might sound stupid. It might not make any sense. But whatever he tells you to do, just do it. What made her say that? What made her say that? I mean, he didn't even tell her that he was going to do the miracle. But Mary, Mary said that hey, she had enough faith to believe that if I asked him to do something, I know he's going to do something. I, I don't know what he's going to do. But he did not tell her that he was going to use a servant to do it. Yeah. What did Mary understand? Mary understood that if God's going to do anything in the earth realm, he's going to do it through you. Mm -hmm. So she said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. I'm going to get out of here. Point number one. Point number one is... She understood that you got to get involved in this. Mm -hmm. Mary understood that you got to get involved in this. So what are you saying, preacher? Your miracle is not going to happen uh, just because you're sitting on your knees and pray. Your yeah. miracle is not going to happen just because you lay in the bed and wish. Your miracle is not going to happen just because you need it. You got to get involved in this. You got to get involved in this. You got to get involved. That's why Mary ran out to Jesus. She said, "We ran out of wine." He said, "Woman, what I'm going to do with you?" My hour has not yet come. He never said yes. She didn't say, that's how, I, this, look here, uh, this is what I want you to do. I, I want you to pour it. I know you had six pots. I want you to get another pot. She didn't say nothing like that. She never said another word to him. She just turned to him and said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. I got one question for you this morning. Do you have the faith to prepare for what shall be while you're worrying about what is? Mm -hmm. I said again, do you have the faith to prepare what shall be while you're waiting on what is? So until we develop the faith to get ready for uh, uh, to get ready for step two while we're down here on step one, we will never understand what God is trying to do in and through our lives. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you got, you got. Understand this thing when I'm trying to say, what do you do when your wedding has run out of wine? Yeah, yeah. Okay, point number two is she understood that God works in the middle of, of expectation. God works in the middle of expectation. And one of the hardest atmospheres for me, one of the hardest atmospheres to do is work with people that don't have no expectation. Amen. Amen. I mean, no, none that always says, oh, well, that ain't going to work. We tried that last year. That ain't going to work. Let's do something different. Well, you keep doing the, the incentive to me, I heard about the incentive is keep doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. So you got to have expectations. So, yeah. so if we lose our expectation, we lose our potential for a miracle. Yeah. So what are you saying? If you lost your job, if you lost your money, if you lost uh, your, your uh, car, if you lost your insurance, if you lost your house, as long as you still have your expectations, you can still get a breakthrough. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anybody here who like this church that church and yeah. the Lord to do something in their life? Yeah, I stopped by to tell you that the devil is after your expectation. Wow. He wants you to accept a wedding without wine. He wants you to accept a life without joy. He wants you to accept a house without a home. He wants you to accept a marriage without love. But the devil is alive. Somebody say, I'll never accept it. I'll never accept it. I know life has more for me than this. I know God did not deliver me from everything he delivered me from to get into here and settle for this. The devil is a liar. I don't know who I came to preach to, but the Lord wants me to wake up your expectation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what happened with the lame man. He said, silver and gold, I have none. But 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 he was expecting, he was expecting something to happen. And the scripture said that he looked, uh, yeah, the man looked on Peter and John expecting something to receive something. So if he didn't have no expectation, he would still be laying at the gate called Grimford. Hallelujah. Is anybody out here expecting something from God today? Yes. Uh, what are you expecting, preacher? Well, I'm glad you asked. 
marriage. Yes. I'm expecting it where? In my marriage. I'm expecting where else? Uh, in my money. Yes. I'm expecting yes. it with my kids. I'm expecting yes. it in my career. I'm expecting yes. it in the calling of my ministry. Yes. I'm expecting it. I'm expecting it. Somebody say, I'm expecting it. I'm expecting it. I'm expecting it. I'm expecting it. I know everything's going to dry. I know the devil, but I expect it. Yes. I expect it. In other words, we don't say, don't leave the party. Don't leave the party. You know how it was when you was out there in the, in the, in the club there, uh, and, 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 and uh, the, the, the party jumped off right after you left. <laughs> okay, it must just be me in the club. No. <laughs> and they're going to let you know the next day, about, girl, you should have left there in the party <laughs> rocking with you when you took off and went home. And y'all wish I stayed. <laughs> What do you mean, preacher? I might have hit a dull moment, but the, but if you but if you just wait on the Lord and be a good yeah. church, oh God, something's bound to happen. Something's got to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Why is that? Because God has saved the best for last. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So point number three, I'm gonna move out your way. She believed whatever He tells you to do, do it. She believed that whatever she tells you, He tells you to do, do it. So Mary told the servants, whatever he tells you to do, do it, and walked away. This might be for somebody, I don't know. Whatever you've been worried about, God said, walk away, it's already done. Walk away, it's already done. You don't have to keep telling God about it, the same thing over and over again, day after day, worrying about what's going on, trying to figure out how you're going to do it. What he said, just walk away. Once you speak the word, just walk away. Yes. After she did, she said, whatever he tells you to do, she just walked away. He didn't speak to them about wine. He spoke to them about water. Mm. So what is it, what is it that if you ask God for wine, that the answer comes back, water? Mm -hmm. Makes us want to ask him, did you hear what I was asking you, Lord? Mm -hmm. Okay, I, 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 I said it out loud. Yeah, I, I asked you to heal my body, and you answered with something totally different. Now watch this. He says, those pots that have been used for ceremonies must become the place of miracles. Mm -hmm. If you don't use this church for more than religious ceremonies, you're going to miss your miracle. Amen. If you don't stop just coming to church Sunday after Sunday, well, it's Sunday, uh, coming to church, going through the motion Sunday after Sunday and trying to get the same parking spot and the same seat and leave at the same hour, you're going to miss your breakthrough. You have to come to this place expecting a transformation and the glory of the Lord to break out in your life. And he says, he says, he says, hey, these pots, these pots that you've been using for ceremony washing are the same pots through which your greatest miracles will flow. And he sends them to draw water mm -hmm. and to fill these large uh, cisterns of water. And the Bible lets us know how much water. He said he had six pots, okay, with a minimum of 20 gallons for six pots. Uh, 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 that's what, uh, 120 gallons? Okay, see, I'm not I'm yeah, school. Wow. Uh, and and, and uh, that's on the low end. But, and, and these pots are heavy, and that's more than one trip back and forth to the river, or back and forth to the well to get the water. And again, they, they're handling water, pouring water, wishing for wine. Mm -hmm. What am I saying? We will go through a season, the season that we need wine, and we prayed about it, and God will have us handling water. Because mm -hmm. it would be easier. It would be easy to get the miracle that, that when we drew it, out of the well, and it already turned into wine. Yep. It'd been easy, yep. but it was still water. Mm -hmm. It wasn't easy to have the faith that it would turn to wine when we were walking, but it was still water. Mm -hmm. It was water when they drew it. It was water when they filled it. And the Bible says, despise not the day of small beginnings. Mm -hmm. Because if we will be faithful, if we can be faithful while we were handling water, there's something in the process of being committed to your vision. See, when it looks like nothing's going to happen supernaturally and the devil said, where is your God now? I thought you had a word from the God. I, I thought God's going to do something. I, I thought, where, why are you carrying water now? You carrying what you could have done for yourself and by yourself. What, what good is it to have God just to get water? 
You could have did it by yourself. That's what the devil said. Well, well, I, 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 uh, even though even though he uh, the devil comes at us like that, I'm I'm just a fat a faith believer that I'm 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 in my water days. I'm in my water days, but I'm gonna do whatever God says to do. So I can see what I can see, what he said, what God says. So I don't know how many trips they made back and forth. They didn't didn't say how many they made, but but they did uh, had to make uh, several trips carrying nothing but water, and they finally got the water pot filled up. And they said, we did what you said to do, Lord, and we're no better off than where we were when we started. Well, you got to let the devil know. We're not about to stop. The devil is a liar. You've got to have the faith to keep on walking in the word, even when it looks like nothing is working. So we're just saying, I refuse to doubt God. Yes. If it's still water, but I'm still not going to doubt God. When we've been working, working in this dimension for 120 times, and it's still water, he says, he's getting ready to take us to another dimension. Yes. Why is he going to do that, preacher? I'm glad you asked me. Because we passed the test in operating in this dimension when it looked like God didn't care, when it looked like God wasn't going to bless you, when it looked like uh, nothing was going to happen. And then God said, I'm going to let you step over into the next dimension. Uh, uh, people, uh, uh, how can I say this? People, people love you as long as you stay where they met you. Yes, sir. But when you step into the next, into the next dimension, let me, uh, uh, in the first dimension, you have dedication. Mm -hmm. That means you pass the test of dedication. Dedication is you being faithful. Mm -hmm. You're coming. You're, 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 you're doing what the, thus said the Lord. You're being faithful. Even when it looked like it wasn't working, you're still faithful. Dedication says, I'm going to obey him. Even though I don't have anything in my bucket to praise him about, you have passed the test of dedication. Mm -hmm. And now you're in the next step which is called transformation. Mm -hmm. You're about to see what the fight is all about. Your, transforma your transformation is in your dedication. Mm -hmm. So out of the pool of your dedication, that's what God commands a blessing. He says, I want you to dip into your dedication. I want you to draw out of your dedication. It was water when you drew it out, and I want you to take it to the head, uh, to the maitre d' uh, at the table. And suppose nothing happened in, 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 in the old season. I, 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 and I left you carrying water, but in your new season, he says, you, it's going to change, but you got to take the steps. Yes. Yes. You got to take the step. The Bible says the steps of a good man are what? Oh, Ordered yes. by God, and he delights in his way. What am I saying? Uh, what I want you to see is it was water when they drew it out, and now they're carrying it into the wedding party to pour it out. Yes. When they poured it out, it had changed to wine. Yes. I can't actually tell you which step it was, of the transformation. That, that's why you got to take every step. You can't if it if it's if it's seven steps that you yeah. to take, you can't take four. You gotta take every step yeah. that he tells you to make. Yeah. That's that's why they're important. That turns your water into wine. So mm -hmm. I don't know when the water changed. I don't know when it changed, but it was somewhere in the process yeah. and, and, and of the steps that the table. Maybe it was every step, but when they poured it out, it had been changed. Yeah. Somebody shout change. Yeah, change. So God said, I command a change in your life today. Yeah, when he amen. changed it, all I know is, is that when he went to the bridegroom, he said, most people serve the good wine first. Mm -hmm. And when he, when he says something, he said, he said but when he waits until the guests are drunk mm -hmm. to, get to, to serve them the cheap wine. Mm -hmm. He said, but, but here's what's important about the, about the wine part. They, they, they were already drunk. In other words, that most people would trick us with bad wine, but because we already are drunk, the drunk is not the point. But God has saved the best for last. Yeah, yeah. 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 And because you praised Him, He yeah. saved the best for last. Yeah. And because you praised Him, even when you were running out of money, yeah. even when you're yeah. running out of friends, yeah. even when you're running out of love, even when you're running out of help, even when you're running out of support, yeah. even when you're running out of your very last dime, your latter days are going to be better yeah. than your past. Yeah. Why? Because Your wedding has run out of wine, just keep on praising. Yes. Just keep on praising. The Bible says he inhabits the praises of the people. But why why the devil don't want you to praise me? Because he, he can't understand why would you praise God in the situation that you're in? Why would you praise God 
in a state you're in. Yes. Why would you praise God yeah. when it looks like there was the end? So it looks like you had finally got to the end of your rope. Oh, I would yeah. understand that the, I, the, I seen a rope that was about to break. But if you reach beyond the break yeah. and hold on, yeah. my God, won't he do it? Yeah. Won't he do it? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about today. That's what I'm talking about today. Oh, what are you going to yeah. do when your wine, when your wedding has ran out yeah. of wine? That's yeah. my time. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe everyone here is saved, but I, I just want to make sure. Is everybody if everybody saved, just wave your hand. Hallelujah. 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 Because that's what it's all about. Knowing Jesus. Yeah, he's the only one that, that can give you strength when your wedding has run out of wine. Yes. He's the only one that, that 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 keeps you moving and keeps you going, even with the aches and pains in your body. God is able yes, to do exceeding abundance of all we can ask or think. Amen. Amen. 